we're going to continue our discussion of graphing with two other kinds of graph transformations. The first is reflections. And a reflection is when you introduce a negative sign somewhere in the equation. There's two different kinds of reflections. If the negative sign is outside the main function, we're going to reflect about the x-axis. If the negative sign is inside the main function, we're going to reflect about the y-axis. So let's look at two different examples. First, we're going to reflect the absolute value of x. So if you remember, the original absolute value of x was this v. Because the minus sign is outside the absolute value, we're reflecting about the x-axis. So this would be our new graph. In this example, we're going to start with the square root of x. Because the negative sign is inside the square root, we are going to be reflecting about y. So our graph would look like that. There's one last kind of transformation, and this is stretching or shrinking. So we'll do both horizontal and vertical. Vertical stretching and shrinking will make it either taller or shorter. Okay. Now, this is where you multiply the entire function by some number in front. Okay. I'm not dealing if the number is positive or negative, because if it's negative, it just is combining it with a reflection. So just looking at the absolute value of this number, as you might expect, if you're multiplying it by a number bigger than 1, say 7, it'll make it taller by a factor of 7. If you're multiplying by a number smaller than 1, say 1 half, it'll make it shorter by a factor of 1 half, or in essence, cut it in 2. So we have y equals the square root of x. Our first example is twice the square root of x. Because 2 is bigger than 1, this is going to make it taller by a factor of 2. So this has the effect of every point, its y-coordinate is doubled, and the graph gets taller. Now, we look at 1 half the absolute value of x, because 1 half is a small number, this has the effect of making it shorter by a factor of 2. So the y-coordinate of every point is cut in half, and it becomes shorter. Okay. Now, we're going to look at horizontal stretching and shrinking. This is where you multiply an equation by a number inside the main function. And just like when we did horizontal movement, it's opposite of what you will expect. So if I multiply it by a big number, it actually makes it skinnier. And if I multiply it by a small number, it will make it fatter. So we're going to start with the square root of x as our example. Our first one is the square root of 1 half x. Because 1 half is a small number, it is going to make this equation fatter by a factor of 2 from the 1 half. This has the effect of making every x coordinate twice as big. When we look at the square root of 2x, this has an effect of making it skinnier okay. by a factor of 2. So every x coordinate is cut in half. You'll notice that fatter makes also looks like shorter and skinnier also looks like taller. You have to be very careful though because they are not by the same scale. Now, the last thing we want to discuss is how to do more than one of these on the same problem. I have to warn you here, this is warning number 14, you must be extremely careful which order you do these transformations in. It doesn't always matter, but there are cases where it matters. So I'm going to give you my preferred list of which order I would do these in. Now there are six possible transformations. Chances are you're not going to have to do more than one or two. But the first thing is horizontal movement, horizontal reflecting, which actually is reflection about y, horizontal stretching. Get all the horizontal things done first. Then we do the vertical things. Vertical stretching, reflect about x, and vertical movement. Notice horizontal and vertical are separated, and they also are in reverse order of each other for the type of movement. Now, the kind you do have to be the most careful about are the two, four marked in orange. Any kind of movement and reflection messes with each other. So if you have both a horizontal movement and a reflection about why, you have to do them in the right order or you'll get the wrong graph. And same for reflection about x and vertical movement. If you don't do them in the right order, you'll get the wrong graph.